Okay, I'm planning today to do some cat things. So I thought that we would start with just a standard warm up that I usually do to get your spine moving. And then we will be down on the mat and doing the variations on cat for most of the session today. It's gonna to be about a half hour. And usually I end with a relaxation at the end, which I will. It'll be brief. If you want to stay relaxing longer at the end, feel free to do that. I'm just going to discontinue at about um, a half hour from now. And you can make a choice of doing something afterwards or just laying there and doing a little extra relaxation because I usually run out of time by the time we get to the end and I can't give you a very long relaxation. So I will talk you into it, and I'll mention that I'm exiting when I exit, but it's up to you whether you actually sit up and go on with your day or just take a few extra minutes to just stay there and enjoy it. So we're gonna start in mountain pose, the basic standing posture. You wanna lift up your toes, about hip width apart with your feet, and then spread your toes out as you put them down, as much as you can. But don't work with your toes. That raises the base of your toes and doesn't give you as good support. So you want to make sure that you've got the whole bottom of your foot connected to the Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders lined up all the way to the top. The crown of your head keeps reaching up to the ceiling, so you're lengthening through your spine. I did have a student in Nashville who grew three quarters of an inch as a result of getting better posture in yoga, so it's possible. Bottom ribs in and up so that that core stays active, supporting your spine, and allows you still to breathe. So you wanna make sure that you're breathing all the way to the lowest part of your lungs. Your belly can expand and sink back in as you exhale. And that makes sure that you're getting all that energy and oxygen into the lowest part of the lungs where it best transfers into your circulatory system. Arms just hanging at your sides and relaxing. And then you should feel centered and grounded in that and pose. And just take a moment to focus inward. You can close your eyes if you want. Breathing deeply and just allowing your whole awareness to turn inward. And that inner connection is your yoga perspective. We will work mindfully at all times so that you're paying attention not only to what your body is doing, but to how you're thinking about it. Just focus inward, find your breath, relax. And then you can open your eyes. We're going to inhale and bring the arms right up to shoulder level and stretch way out through your fingertips. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart with your elbows just a little bit back. And then inhale, stretching your arms straight out to the front. And exhale, your hands behind, clasping your fingertips together. Inhale, lifting your heart, looking overhead, pushing your hands down. So really expand across the heart. And then pivot at your hips, exhale, and come over into a forward bend. Let your hands come up toward the ceiling. And then tucking your chin a little bit toward your chest, letting the back of your neck stretch as you bring that top of your head down toward the floor. So your hands can come up as high in the direction of your head or the ceiling as you want them to. You can keep your knees a little bent if you want. You can lift the sitting bones bottom of your body up so that you get a Stretch along the back of your legs. And then with your knees bent, tuck in your chin and slowly work your way up to standing. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, and breathe. So a little upper body back bend here. And then inhale to the top. Exhale and release your arms. And just stand there in mountain pose while I go and get my microphone because it might be easier to hear.
Okay, so hopefully you can hear me better now. And again, we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did, still warming up those forward bend, backward bend directions of your spine. So inhale, arms reaching out. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch straight out to the front. And exhale, bringing your hands behind. Now this time when you clasp your fingers, shift them over one position. It'll feel a little weird, that's okay. And then again, hands pressing down, chest pressing up, and head pressing back. Take a moment to breathe. And then exhale, and again, pivot over and relax. So hands coming up, head coming down, lifting through the back of your body, and down into your head. And again, as you breathe there, just relax, letting that back get a good stretch. And then bending your knees, lift your ribs, drop your sitting bones, and wind your way back to the top and into the upper body for the back bend. So just pressing hands down, head back, chest up. Keep breathing. And then inhale to the top, exhale, and release. And again, take a moment, feel your body, notice that circulation through your spine. Inhale, bring your arms again to shoulder level. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Bring your hands right above your shoulders. And then pass your hands past each other. Turn the palms around and clasp your hands. And pull your arms back by your ears. So a little mental yoga. Sitting bones go down, crown up. And then without twisting your body, lean over to one side. So you're getting that lateral stretch to the spine, pulling those ribs apart on that side you're leaning away from, and then push the foot you're leaning away from down a little bit more, and that'll expand that stretch even a little bit further. And then inhaling, come back up to the center, and switch your hands so the other one is in front. Again, shoulders, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, body straight and exhale over to the opposite side. And again, as you come into that, make sure that you're not leaning your top shoulder forward, so maybe pull it back just a little bit. Reach out through your head, down into that foot you're leaning away from. And again, inhale back to the center, and exhale back into mountain. So take a moment again, feeling that spine, all that energy and circulation increasing. And now that we've warmed it up a little bit, we're going to do a twist. So that'll be the fifth and sixth positions for the spine. So when you're doing a twist, you always want to be stretching the spine apart. So the sitting bones, tailbone go down, crown goes up. So that you're stretching and opening the spine so it has room to twist. Again, inhale, bring those arms to shoulder level, palms up, right over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, pull them back, and down. So shoulder blades and sitting bones down, crown high, stretch the spine, and then exhaling, turn either direction for a twist. You can keep your knees a little bent, keep the weight on both feet evenly. Stretch up as you breathe, and pivot over as you exhale, and just kind of slide into that twist position forward bend as your body wants. So again, just relax. Allow your body to straight in the forward bend. And then on an inhalation, come back up, look toward the ceiling, lift your heart, but be gentle with your low back as you go into that upper body back bend, not your lower back. And then inhale upright. Exhale back to the center and switch your arms because we want to balance the body and get everything working evenly. And again, everything straight and stretched apart as you breathe in and exhale to get side for your twist. And another breath in, exhale and pivot over. So coming into your forward bend, just relax. Allow your breath to deepen. 
your body to go into that position as much as it wants. And again, just relax with both feet evenly sinking into the mat. And on an inhalation, once more work your way slowly up in the twist and lift your heart as you look up and pull your elbows back. And again, gentle on your low back and stretch back through your elbows and your head. And then inhale upright, exhale to the center, arms over your shoulders, and then pivot at your hips, bring your body parallel to the floor as much as you can, keeping those arms by your ears. Take a breath in, and then exhale and drop into ragdoll. Just hang with those arms hanging wherever they go. If you like your lower back getting an extra stretch, you can pull your hands behind your legs and pull in a little bit deeper. So take a moment to breathe. Exhale, release your arms to the front. Slide your hands up your shins just below your knees. Press the palms in. Straighten your back. So chest and chin forward, hips and sitting bones back. Crown stretching away from the tailbone. And then again, exhale, drop back down into ragdoll. Palms together. And again, just wind your spine back up to standing hands to your heart, and then back into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get there to close your eyes and just focus on your spine, getting that yoga inner perspective on what's happening inside your body. And then inhaling, you can bring your arms to shoulder level again, palms toward the ceiling, look up, bring your palms together, Exhale them to your heart. And we're going to come all the way down into child's pose. So just kneel on your mat, hips back on your heels. You can have your hands, palms up next to your side of your feet and bring your forehead toward the floor or all the way down. Now, a few things about child's pose. If your knees and thighs feel too tight, you can pad between your heels and hips for your calves and thighs. If your ankles feel like they're stretching too much, you can put a little pad under those. And if your head doesn't reach the floor, you can put a block or a pillow under your forehead if you're going to stay in child pose very long. If you feel like you can't breathe, you can separate your knees, gives you more space for lung expansion. But if you like your lower back to get a really good stretch, bring your knees together. That will give you more stretch in your lower back. And then we're going to inhale and sit up on your heel. And we're going to come into table position. So the hands come onto the mat. Lift up onto your fingertips and bring the whole palm of your hand right down into the mat so you get a really good secure base. And then bring your knees back under your hips. And if you have a tendency to sink through your lower back, bring those bottom ribs up for support on your spine so that that core is active and supporting you. If you have a tendency to hunch up through the upper back, bring your chest down toward the floor, your chin maybe a little bit forward. So we want to start with your back as straight and flat as you possibly can. So we're going to be on our knees and hands for a while. If your knees feel like your mat is into that surface beneath you a little bit too much, you can either fold over your mat and get a little extra padding under it, or you can use an actual pad under your knees. And it's very stressful for some people on their wrists. If that's you, you can at any time lift your wrist up circle it around, get that circulation and muscle movement going, and put it back down. Keep your wrist, elbow, shoulder always in line. So you don't want to be bending your knee, elbows, and you don't want to be having one hand forward and one hand back. You want everything nicely lined up. Now, if that's still too much on your wrist, again, you can fold your pad, your mat and give a little padding under the heel of your palm 
and it'll give you a little bit more of an angle rather than that 90 degree position for your wrist. If that's still too much for you, thumb inside your palm, fingers around it, and then the ring part of your finger goes down so that your wrist isn't bent at all. Everything is optional. It's whatever's right for your body because yoga is a personal practice. So again, get your situation grounded into the mat. Get that lower back up, chest slightly down, everything straight. And then we're just going to do the regular cat position first. So whatever you normally do when you drop your ribs down and lift your hips and look forward, that's a back bend. And then tuck your sitting bones, tailbone down. Lift your ribs and drop your chin into your chest with the top of your head going down toward the floor. And that's the forward bend. And then come back to neutral. So we're going to take that a little bit more mindfully. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a place between your waist and your shoulders toward the upper back. So someplace up around between the shoulder blades. Put your mind in that place and then bring that part of your chest down toward the floor as you come into the back bend. So really focus on the upper back as you sink into that chest area, pulling toward the floor, looking forward, crown toward the ceiling and hips going up. So you're getting a little bit of an upper body back bend coming into your cat position. And then keeping your mind on that same spot along your spine in the upper back, Push it toward the ceiling as you tuck into that forward bend. Chin in, sitting bones, tailbone down, crown of the head toward the floor. Really feel that upper body in the, back, in the forward bend. And then inhale and come back to neutral. And close your eyes and feel what's going on in your body. Because you'll notice if you kept that focus and kept that motion in the upper back that there's a little bit more circulation there. And then bring your awareness to your lower back. So someplace between your waist and your hips, pick a point on your spine there and bring that lower back point down as if it's the lowest point going down. And again, rotate your face forward, crown toward the ceiling, sitting bones, lifting. So lower back as your focus, really feel how that's working in your body. And then keeping that lower back point as your focus, lift it as if it's the highest point going up toward the ceiling as you tuck into your forward bend. It probably won't be the highest point, but don't worry, just imagine that it could be. So keep lifting through that lower back, as you tuck in your chin, top of the head toward the floor, sitting bones down. And then again, inhale, coming back to neutral table position with your back flat. And again, notice how your spine is feeling. Breathing deep. Just feel that lower back with more circulation. And then for our next position, we're going to focus on the solar plexus. So this is between your ribs, beneath the sternum, and above the navel. So that fleshy mid part of your torso. So keep your focus on that point. So solar plexus comes down toward the floor as you lift your hips and sitting bones. Look forward, chest and chin toward the front, crown toward the ceiling. Just drop that whole solar plexus middle of your body down toward the floor. And then as you inhale, push the solar plexus up as you tuck into the forward bend. And again, that solar plexus is going up as the sitting bones, hips go down and the crown reaches down as well, chin tucking in. Feel your body really focus on the solar plexus, pull it up toward your spine, toward the ceiling. 
And then again, inhale and come back to neutral. Take a moment, feel your spine, notice where the circulation is maximized as a result of that cat position. Now we're going to do a little cat balancing. So again, keeping that rib or bottom rib area up to support your spine and the chest pulling down. You want the back nice and flat. So take a moment and breathe. Make sure your hands are situated right under your shoulders and knees under your hips. We're going to slide the right foot back and lift it up to hip level and extend out through the base of your toes. So make sure that both hips are facing the floor and that you're evenly into the two hands. And then we're going to do our balance part. We're going to take the opposite hand, the left hand, and extend it at shoulder level forward. So right along your ear, palm down toward the floor, just extending through the fingertips, back through the base of the toes, whole body lengthening. And then return your hand to the mat and your knee to the floor. Take a moment and feel how that was for your body and allow yourself to readjust into your table position, getting ready for the opposite balance. So left foot out, bring it up to hip level, extend out through those base of the toes, get everything even toward the floor so the hips are facing still down, and the opposite right hand comes out and extends forward. So just extend through the base of the toes, through the fingers, maximize that stretch, and then return your hand to the mat and your knee to the floor. Take a moment and breathe, and then just sink back, hips to your heels, lift your hands, circle those wrists, and give yourself a little break. Take a couple moments to breathe, just feeling how that worked in your body. And then pivoting back up onto your hands and knees. Just allow yourself to reposition, getting everything nice and flat once again. So we're going to do something similar to the balance, only going maybe a little bit further. So remember, personal practice, if what we just did was already enough for you, just keep doing that one with the hand and leg extended. If that was more than enough for you, you can just go back to regular cat and continue to do the forward bend and backward bend. If you're ready to go further, we're going to bring the right leg back up to hip level, extending out through the base of the toes. Then we're going to bring the left arm forward once again, allowing the balance to be situated. And if you're good there and you want to go further, we're going to turn the palm up and we're going to bend the knee, kind of rolling your hip in so that the bottom of your foot goes up toward the ceiling. And then lift the bottom of the foot and the hand a little bit more, so coming into a balanced back bend. Take a moment and breathe. And then hand straight out, foot straight out, palm back down toward the floor and hand releases and knee releases. Take a moment and breathe, readjust, circle that hand that was on the floor if you need a little release for your wrist. And again, find your position, nice flat back, breathing deep, exhale any tension, and we're going to balance the body so that we do the opposite side. So left leg slides back and up. And again, find your position, get your situation all even, pressing into the mat with both hands. And then the right arm comes up. Extend through the fingertips and the base of your toes. Turn the palm up, bend your knee, foot up toward the ceiling, rotating that left hip in a little bit. And then again, a little bit more, a back bend, raising your hand and pressing your foot up 
a little bit further. Take a moment and breathe. And then straighten it out. Turn the palm back down. Hand to the mat. Knee to the floor. And again, just take a moment to sink back and allow those wrists to get a little bit of circulation. And then once again, pivot up onto your hands and knees. So just like we did when we started with the forward bend and backward bend, and then we did those lateral side-to-side -side motions, we're going to do a side-to-side -side motion. So keeping your back flat, your whole body positioned, just as it is in table position, we're going to exhale and turn one direction, bringing that hip and shoulder a little bit closer toward each other as you look back toward your feet. So take a moment and breathe. Feel the ribs stretch on the side you're turning away from. And then exhale and return back to the center. Stretch your spine. Keep the back straight and flat. Exhale, turn looking over the opposite shoulder. And again, just hip and shoulder coming close and breathing into the ribs that are stretching apart on that opposite side. And then exhale and return to the center. And then we're going to do another flat back version, walking the hands back. So a little bit deeper into that lateral motion, bringing the hip and shoulder close on the side you're moving toward. And again, move your hands back to the center and reposition. And then for the opposite side, again, exhale, walk those hands as far back as they want to go, hip and shoulder coming close, opposite side stretching apart. And move the hands back to the center. And then finally, we're going to do a couple of twists. So once again, get your back nice and flat everything positioned correctly. We're gonna slide the right hand forward and bring the elbow down where the hand was, so right under your shoulder. And then push your right shoulder forward so that'll give you a little bit more stretch through the back of your body. And then rotate your face toward your left shoulder or further up toward the ceiling, bringing your whole spine, not just your neck, into that twist. So breathe and relax as you move into the twist. And then exhaling, rotate your face to look back down to the floor. Slide your hand back and into table position. Take a moment and feel your spine. Lots of energy moves in the twist. So just notice how that is in your body. And then we're going to do balancing the body. Same twist to the other side. Left hand slides forward, elbow comes down where your hand was. And again, slide your left shoulder toward your left hand and rotate your face toward your right shoulder or further up toward the ceiling. Whole body moving into that twist. Keep breathing, rotating, and allow the twist to happen. Don't force it. And then again, rotate your face to look down, slide the hand back, and you're back in table position. Take a moment there, circle your wrists if you need to. And we're going to do one more twist, a little bit more complex. So it's a three-part twist. You can always stay with just step one. You never have to go to step two. And you never, ever have to go to step three unless you really want to. And if you do go to step three, remember that it gets a little balancey as we get into step three. So make sure that you are being gentle and careful and not going too far because you can, and I have seen it happen, fall over. So again, get really 
situated into your hands, into your knees, nice flat back. We're going to take the left hand up, or one hand up, palm up, and slide it through and bring your head and shoulder down toward the floor, elbow bent. This is level one. This is a perfectly good twist. So your side of your head is on the floor. The extended hand, palm up, is just stretching away from your body. And your whole spine is in a nice twist. If you like that, feel free to stay there. If you think, mm, I could probably do a little bit more, this might be interesting, you can take your right foot and bring it near your left hand and press the heel away. And that will give you a little bit more lower back twist. If you're loving it and you think, hmm, what more could I do here? How can I get into more of a twist? Take your right hand above your shoulder, palm toward the floor, toward the front foot, and then bring the back of your hand toward the floor behind you and roll onto the back of your head, not your neck. So come as far into that as you want. Don't go too far, you could unbalance. And then when you're ready to get out, if you've got your hand up, bring it back down. If you've got your leg out, bring it back in, and then press into that hand and unthread, untwisting, and returning to neutral table position. And of course, we're going to do the opposite side, but I'm going to turn around so that maybe you can see it a little bit more effectively. So again, knees under your hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. And that opposite hand comes through, head and shoulder down, and elbow up. Side of the head connected to the floor, just a nice little twist for your body. Stay there, perfectly good twist, or bring that foot near your extended out to the side hand. And again, stay there on your shoulder and head, side of the head. Press out through the heel, get that lower back more twisty. Or if you really love it and you want to, the hand comes up, palm toward your front foot. And again, lower it behind you, rolling onto the back of your head a little bit further. Take a moment there and breathe wherever you are. Let the twist happen, don't force anything. And when you're ready to release, the hand comes back down to the mat, the leg comes back in if it's out, and you unthread and come back up to your neutral table position. Sink your hips back, slide your hands forward, roll your wrists around, and breathe. And then you can stay in child's pose for the relaxation if you want to, or you can sit up and bring your feet to the front of the mat, and roll onto your back into corpse position. So just coming into your corpse position, just feet separated about hip width apart, toes up toward the ceiling. Hands, palms up, slightly away from your hips, shoulders settling down into the mat. You can lift your hips and bring that sacrum down a little bit more into the mat. If your lower back is uncomfortable, you can bend your knees and put some padding under your knees. And just move your head back and forth, getting that neck released. And then take a deep breath. And as you exhale, let your body sink into that surface beneath you. And just allow Mother Earth to support your body, letting every muscle go. We did a lot of spine work today, so just relax through your ribs, through your torso, through your spine. Shoulders and arms relax, legs, feet, lower body relaxed. Just close your eyes and deepen your breath, focusing inward, allowing your body just to sink into that embrace beneath you, Mother Earth supporting you as she does every day and with a deep breath just let your body go completely 
allowing awareness of your body to release from your attention. As your mind releases your body, other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. And at this moment, there's no need to think of anything outside your breath. Just allow your breath to deepen and your thoughts to drift and your body to relax. Sinking deep into the earth's embrace, allowing the awareness to focus deep within, finding that point of peace we each have internally. And let that peace awareness just grow in your mind, filling your body with peace. Filling your being with peace, just becoming peace. And if you want to stay relaxing even longer, feel free to do so. If you're ready to release, just begin bringing energy and awareness back into the room, into your body, into your being. As you breathe deeply, just allow your body to begin moving gently, moving your arms and hands, feet and toes. And as you exhale, bring your lower back to the mat. Bend your knees and draw your knees up toward your chest. Circle your arms around your knees and give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug for the body's work this morning in yoga and for the work your body does for you every day. Just appreciate and allow your body to know that you recognize how helpful it is for your daily work. And when you're ready to release that hug and appreciation, bring your hands down, your feet to the mat, roll over to the side, and sit back up. And just allow yourself to take a moment to center back into the moment, preparing for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me this morning. If you have any questions.